Hello, Datables. Welcome to another episode of the Datable Podcast, where we are your dating sociologists, and we will examine, study, and dissect human behavior when it comes to dating and explain it all to you so we can navigate dating much better. That sounded so professional, so educational. We are so profesh. <laughs> you don't even know. I always <laughs> like that we say active daters turned dating sociologists, because I think that really sums it up, because we were both very much in the thick of things. But, mm -hmm. you know, through this podcast alone, we've talked to, I mean, how many people? Like We've talked thousands. to thousands of people. So that is the qualitative research that gives you sociology creds. Of course, we're not accredited yet, but someday. <laughs> we're accredited in the podcast world. That's yes. all that matters. <laughs> we're accredited by Coursera. Yeah, hey, like, if we can yeah. help you find your person, that's all the credentials we need. And I'm proud to say we have helped people find their people. So, you know, it's not like we're just talking BS here. People are finding their people through us. Yes. I remember like talking to um, Nikki Novo, one of our mm -hmm. past guests, who is the medium. And I remember her talking about how I was the type of person that needed to watch before doing mm. and that this podcast really suited me for doing it because it allowed me to really study and kind of dissect what I wanted and what I didn't want in a relationship, mm. which would set me up for having the right relationship for myself. And I think like in retrospect, she was a hundred percent correct because I feel like I'm able to reflect in ways that I a hundred percent would never have if we weren't doing this podcast. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You kind of want to see how other people have done it mm -hmm. and maybe pave the way before you even want to try that direction. That makes sense. Exactly. I like yeah. that. <laughs> She knew you so well. Learn from each other. That's all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which learning well, from each other is exactly what we're doing today. Yes. I feel like yes. we've been wanting to do this topic for a while, dating with a disability. And I'm so glad that we finally did it with our guest, Tiffany, who really shed light onto this topic. And I think she really expanded my definition as well of what a disability even means. I think we think of, you know, like physical disabilities and it can go so, so much deeper to, you know, mo emotional, behavioral, like there's so many aspects of what a disability means. It does open your eyes, my eyes, all, all of our eyes to talk about the subject. And I feel like now is the right time to talk mm -hmm. about this as well. I think everyone's very open to it. I remember... I've had trainings about it too, even mm. in the workplace. So it's good that we're opening this up into the dating world. But I think a lot of us have gone on so many one date, two date kind of things that we haven't even gotten to the point of knowing someone's disabilities. Right. right? Like right. imagine all the people you have been on dates with and what they would have revealed to you if had it been date five or six. Mm. Because mm -hmm. I think we think of like the things you can see. And as we go into it, a lot of it is, you know, some of it's mental health related and things that may not be on the surface of date one or two. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is just a really good discussion to have to be more to, to just accept others mm -hmm. a little bit more and to know that everyone has their own journey that they're going through. And it's really hard to judge someone based on a snapshot of their life mm -hmm. that you are entering at. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously for anyone that has a disability that they're dealing with, this episode will be incredibly powerful. But I think a lot of times when you're dating, it's it's kind of like you don't know what's going to get thrown your way. Like you think mm -hmm. like you have this image of who you'll end up with. And I feel like a lot of times there's, you know, this person has been living a life for many, many years before you that, you know, there's certain things that are going on for them that may not be in like the, you know, the picturesque view of what you think your partner is going to look like because we all are much deeper. We all have 
you know, aspects of our personalities and just inherent traits that may not be like what is like listed on our dating profile per se, like the basics. Yes. Yes. This is why it's so important to get to know people for who mm -hmm. they are. And it's hard to do that based on dating profiles. And I get it. I just, I spent all weekend with some single boys who are <laughs> navigating the dating scene and they're just telling me they're dating woes. And I get it. I mean, I totally understand why it can be so frustrating and hard and you don't understand why you're even wasting, I mean, quote unquote, wasting your time dating. But I say this all the time. There's a lid for every pot. And when you mm -hmm. find your lid, it is an incredible feeling. So keep looking for your lid because you're because your lid is desperately looking for you, too. Yeah. And I love this. Like, you know, we all have imperfections. None of us are perfect. So, you know, like I think the reframe of it is like letting someone into your life and all mm. the incons like all the imperfections that are there, allowing someone to kind of be along for that ride and you be along for the ride for them. That's like the greatest form of intimacy when you really think about it. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. When you are, yeah, when you're sharing an experience together mm -hmm. and then you get to create new experiences together that's the ultimate form of connection yeah and i feel like you know it's never that we want to wish bad like or never we never want to wish circumstances on people like we talk about in this episode um, Tiffany's disabilities came from a car accident. Like we never want to wish those circumstances, mm -hmm. but I do think having the heavy stuff does like, you know, build layers to your personality and it goes much deeper than just the surface connection. So while it's never like a good thing that none of us want, you know, disabilities, but I think having that is just an extra dimension of someone that you can really like learn to love like the full capacity of someone. And something kind of interesting about that, and you'll hear this in this episode, is that Tiffany has told her story a million times. And she's told her story to the point where she can remove her emotions mm -hmm. from the story. And it is a very traumatic emotional story. And I think a lot of us, and maybe not to this degree, but we all have these stories that we retell on dates mm -hmm. to the point where we remove our emotions from it too. It just becomes part of storytelling. And it does inspire me to retell my story differently now because you realize your story could have such a profound impact on mm -hmm. the person you're telling it to, even though you've been saying this story for you know, the millionth time, it's the same thing to you, but it's new to someone else. So I think that's just something for us to keep in mind. Every time you go on a date and you tell your story, know that it's impactful and that you can retell the story a little bit differently each time. Yeah, we talk on this episode a lot about vulnerability, and I feel like vulnerability is the biggest buzzword. I'm actually yeah. kind of sick about hearing about vulnerability because <laughs> it's just this catch-all phrase, and I feel like people don't even know what it means. And we kind of go into how sometimes you can relate trauma with vulnerability, and that isn't what it necessarily means to be vulnerable. Yes. And, you know, like, I think it's how you tell your story and how you connect with others is so important when it comes to dating and relationships. And that doesn't necessarily mean doing it in the ways that we think. And I think that mm -hmm. is a really great discussion that I'm not going to go into too much more because we go way into it. But, you know, there is always kind of of all different sides of there's different sides of the coin, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love that observation. I was at a music festival this weekend and maybe did a little drugs, but <laughs> um, the drugs made me realize something is that when we talk about vulnerability, we think it's about revealing. We have to reveal something about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yes, that is part of vulnerability. But I realized that there's another side of the V word, which is listening. Mm -hmm. When you just sit and listen and not talk, that's also very vulnerable because it opens you up for reactions and and judgment. So I think also it's okay to not talk and listen 
And that puts you in a vulnerable state also. Mm -hmm. I think vulnerability can also just be letting someone into your life a little more. Mm. Like this weekend, I had the pleasure of introducing my boyfriend Ah. to my parents, which was a big step for me, but they were visiting. And, you know, I was a little nervous, I'll admit it, but I think... It was really good. All said and done, it was really great. Like, they all got along really well. But I think we, like, both kind of walked away being, like, we've seen a new side of each other. And we've Mm -hmm. seen where, like, I really like sharing with him that where I've come from, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. that side of me that might be a little removed now that I don't live at home and I live across the country. And Mm -hmm. I think that's really nice. And there is a level of vulnerability of just inviting someone deeper into your life. Mm. And I think a lot of that doesn't necessarily mean it's trauma bonding, but it's just like simple things that invite that person in. I think meeting someone's parents is so telling, you know, you kind of sit there and you think, oh, that's where you got, you know, (laughs) I get it. That's why you are that way. Or that's why you have this characteristic. You're like, I see. That the apple does not fall too far from the tree. <laughs> exactly. We think the parents, I mean, we could do a whole podcast episode on that in itself because I feel like people have such different views of the importance of meeting parents. Mm. Like I've had so many friends that are just like, yeah, I've introduced every single person I'm dating to my parents. It's not mm-hmm. a big deal at all. And then I'm definitely someone that it's a, it's a big deal. Like mm-hmm. I'm not going to introduce every last person to my parents. So it's interesting how people swing so far on the spectrum of that one. I almost feel like it's hard to even know how much weight to give it because people view it so differently. Do your parents have unspoken rules of how? Oh, a absolutely. How a boyfriend should act around them. And what are these unspoken absolutely. rules? Absolutely. I think it's like one of those things that I was like, oh my God, I hope this goes well because of that. But it's, it's, there's a line of, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's hard to pinpoint what they are exactly. Yeah. But they're in my head of just like certain things that would not be great, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like my parents are, sometimes they're like, well, he should really take that seat. And I'm like, why? I don't know. In their <laughs> mind, there's a reason why the seating chart and arrangement Interesting. would be as is in their mind. But to me, it's just not intuitive. So sometimes I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that chances are things will just go as planned in their mind. (laughs) I don't know if my parents have like that rigid of rules, but I think they do have, you know, there's certain things that might be more judgmental. For instance, my brother, I did a FaceTime with my brother and my boyfriend, and we were talking about like meeting the parents and my brother was like, yeah, like, probably if you don't drink a lot, like, it will go a long oh, way. Oh, yeah. And our boyfriend was like, oh, yeah, now that I know that, I don't need to have a drink. So it's, I think it's, like, stuff like that that's more of the unwritten mm-hmm. rules for mine. And it's, I guess I would know the rules, but it's sometimes, like, I don't want to push someone to behave a certain way. But yeah. the other side of it is if you're setting them up for success, like, why wouldn't you tell them? Like, you know? Right. <laughs> Right. Like if you know flowers are definitely going to go a long way, <laughs> then right. you tell them to bring flowers. Right. Like if it was the reverse situation with drinks, for instance, and my boyfriend's mother like didn't want me to do that, it's not that big a deal for me to have a drink or not have a drink. So I'd rather not have one, right? To make that mm. impression. Yes. Well, I would love to hear from our listeners. Let's do a little call out. Maybe hashtag <laughs> meet the parents. Oh, I love it. Are there it. any unspoken rules that your parents have when it comes to your significant other meeting them? I would love to hear all of them. Just tag us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and then hashtag meeting the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. I feel like we need to make like a third. Was it? They already have a sequel to Meet the Parents. We need like the third one. Yeah, I don't know. Was that the, called a treat? Meet the Fockers. Yeah, that one. That, yeah. Uh, meeting the Craft Chicks. Is that the? <laughs> I, is that don't the third, big, I don't know. Third. I don't know if we're making enough time to get that. <laughs> Well, you know, we were just talking about this too, is that I have not met the craft chicks yet. I know. I, am, I haven't met the parents. 
I know, which is crazy. My parents are dying to meet you, UA. That has been... I've met your parents. I have yes. had the luxury to meet the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they were quite adorable, must I say. <laughs> They're such cuties, and I can't wait to meet your parents. You have to tell me about the unspoken rules when it comes to friends yep. meeting them. Yeah. You know? okay. They were like... Your parents were like, how's that radio show going? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> My parents still ask about you all the time. Oh. They're like, how's Julie? Glad I made the impression that I did. <laughs> I like met one of my friend's parents in Boston when I lived there. And he still asks about me today, her dad, because we went fishing and I only caught like the tiny fish. And then that night for dinner, <laughs> like, you know, like the fish that they fish with, like not a real fish. It's like the bait for the fish. You're kidding That's what me. I caught. And I was super excited. He's like, that's not a fish. And then that night for dinner, we had chicken and he's like, could have had fish <laughs> and he still asks about me all the time a oh. lasting impression of that ca- in that canoe with our fishing equipment the infamous julie and her tiny fish <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it is funny how you like impact certain people at some point like i always think about you never too, know. like i think it's funny because i've met um like some of my cousins we've met their significant others that Yes, there was, like, one that we, like, met for a bit that just, you know, they broke up because that happens, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so weird to think about, like, we still mention this guy. Like, you know, for him. Like, it's so weird in me. Like, I would feel weird, like, thinking about that. But it's such a reality. It's not weird. I don't know why it is weird. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) But people do make a profound impact on you some or a lasting impression. And we do the same thing with other people, and we tend to forget that. The most telling is when you have a friend introduce you to someone and how they introduce you. It it surprises me every time how mm-hmm. someone introduces me because that's what they've pretty much put me in a bucket as. Mm. And, it, you know, it's, it's just interesting. Okay, so a f- couple quick announcements. At Datable Podcast is our Instagram handle. Make sure to follow us there. Love in the Time of Corona is our Facebook group. This is the public group. Just give us a little one-liner about why you're dateable so we know you're a real human being and that you listen to this podcast, and then we'll let you in. And and then the sounding board is our premium community. We've had a lot of new members join lately, some really good office hours that UA and I hold that are monthly that people could bring their their questions. We had such a great session last week. Like I really left energized. I think people kind of, you know, have been in a little bit of a dating slump, felt energized as well. You know, whether it was like looking at the apps in a different light, using them like in a different way or you know we even went through like ideas of meeting more IRL which you know is always uh I think especially after being cooped up in COVID times is something that a lot of us are greatly deeply desiring right this minute so yeah if you want to join the sounding board we do the monthly chats with the two of us but also there's weekly chats and video calls with our host team who are incredible and they're just great discussion. We had one about not taking rejection personally that had super high attendance. So really great ones coming up, especially as we go into the holiday season that always kind of brings things up for a lot of people. So datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. Make sure to go there first and sign up and then we will let you into the secret Facebook group. That is the PSA. (laughs) And we've had so many new listeners join recently who've been curious about this Finding Your Person program that we launched a while ago. If you are one of those people who who have been interested, you saw something that we posted a while ago, you can still sign up for the wait list. It's findingyourperson.com. The program is currently closed, but there is an opportunity that uh, there's a chance that we may open up the program again. Um, so just sign up for the wait list so you get first dibs when we do open up the program again. Yes. Those, the calls, the little group live calls we've been having for those have been just so incredible. So incredible. I can like see the light bulbs going off. I love it. It's so great. <laughs> it's so great. We have great people in the program. Great people. Cool. So let's get into a couple of our sponsors now. <laughs> 